If you have a fear of public speaking because you know that you're concerned about what other people think and you're noticing that because of those fears, you're giving up on opportunities or you're finding that it's difficult to step up in leadership, then this is the video for you because I'm going to be sharing three ways that you can stop caring how other people think so that you can get your ideas out there and be able to communicate with ease. So let's talk about this a little bit when it comes to fear of what other people think or over concern about what others think. Why does that happen? The essence of that fear is rejection, right? In terms of rejection, that's a little bit of unpredictability in terms of will they reject, will they not reject, and there it presents as a risk to us. But if you really look at the root of rejection itself, why does rejection hurt, right? So I really want to share this with you so that you have some awareness of yourself because when you are aware of why I react that way, why do I, why do I fear those things? Why do I do what I, what, what I do? And why has this been a pattern for me? When you really understand yourself, this is where you can truly empower yourself to be able to do things that you have not been able to do before. So let's talk about this just a little bit before I get into the three ways on how to overcome it. So when it comes to rejection, why does that really hurt? Is because inside your brain, when you experience physical pain, let's say you stubbed your toe on something, right? Or you hit your knee, it feels painful. And that pain registers in our brain. So if I were to hook you up to a functional MRI and you experience pain in your body of a stubbed toe, hurt knee, anything like that, certain areas of your brain will light up and register that pain. Well, these certain areas of the brain that light up to physical pain, they're the exact same areas and very similar areas that light up when we experience social pain. And social pain refers to rejection, right? That type of a turning down, that type of abandonment from a group or a tribe, or that type of a rejection from them. So this is the same, our brain is registering the same emotions as we do in physical pain. And that is the essence of why social pain due to rejection hurts. Right? So knowing this about yourself, that is what gives you the control to empower yourself beyond the means. So I want to hear from you. Comment below. Share with me as we go on what you have learned, what your key takeaways are, because knowledge, just learning this information is not enough because it's just potential power. But when you want to go up to your fullest potential, this is where you have to implement your knowledge. So comment below. And as we go through this, let me know what takeaways you have learned. All right, so let's go to the three different ways. The first way to stop caring what others think is to redirect your locus of control. Locus of control, that phrase. What it means is your perception of where you have your most power, right? Your perception of where you have authority to make that change. And there's two types of locuses of control. You have an internal locus or you have an external locus. So when you have an external locus of control, what that causes is a perception that things happen to me. Right? They are outside of my control. I can't make things happen. Life happens to me and this is what happens and I just have to see what will happen, where it will take me. That's an external locus of control. So on the flip side, an internal locus of control is where you feel that I have the power to make things happen. Instead of waiting for them to happen to me, instead of waiting for life to happen to me, I make things happen in my life. I master my own destiny and that is called an internal locus of control. So as you can imagine, the difference between just that shift from external to internal, this is truly empowering. If you have an internal locus control, now you are in control of your own life. You take back the steering wheel of your life. You master your own destiny. You can master your life as well, right? So when you redirect your locus of control, this is the foundation that will give you the empowerment from the inside out, not the outside in, but the inside out to make things happen. Because oftentimes when we feel that I'm, I'm overly concerned with what other people think of me, what others think is an external locus. Isn't it true? Wouldn't you agree with me that you cannot control what other people think of you? You definitely cannot control how they respond to you as a result of what they think. And the only thing we have control of is our own perceptions and our own actions. But the actions come from the perceptions we have. So if you take back control of those things that you do have control over, then you truly have an internal locus of control and you stop caring what other people think, right? So that is the first way that you can take this empowerment to levels that you've never experienced before and therefore have a freedom from that that you've never experienced before. The second way to stop caring what others think is to reevaluate your relationship with fear. So when it comes to care over concern about what other people think, there are two reasons why we can be overly concerned with that. And both of these reasons pertain to fear. 
right? The first type of fear is fearing the loss of respect from them or the loss of a relationship that we could potentially have with them or that we already have with them. And the second one is the fear of gaining the consequences of rejection, right? Gaining all the negative emotions or gaining those negative experiences that come up as a consequence of rejection. So we fear those things. And both of those fears together, the summation of them causes us to be overly concerned with what, with what other people think of us because we fear losing the relationship with them or we fear gaining those negative consequences or experiences as a result of their rejection. So when it comes to seeking that relationship or seeking the respect from that relationship and all of the collaborative experiences that could potentially come out of that relationship, because chances are you value that relationship for whatever reason. And that's why we seek out that relationship to maintain it or build it and so on. But anytime that you seek a relationship, a workplace relationship or other, anytime you seek a relationship and you seek all of the positives associated with the relationship in terms of respect, and you, speak it, you seek it with the expectation of avoiding rejection or avoiding the possibility of rejection, it's not possible because life gives you both. In terms of, remember I mentioned before, the external locus of control. We cannot control what other people think of us or whether or not they will reject us. So anytime that you, the moment that you try and you have that expectation to seek only the side of it where it's going to be respectful and only the side of it where they are supportive and only the side of it where they give you the value that you're looking for in that relationship and you're seeking it without the possibility of rejection, this is where your intuition steps in and gives you those emotions of fear. And that emotion that you're feeling serves a purpose. It's serving you to show you intuitively that life gives you both and it's not a reasonable expectation. And it's not authentic as well to seek a relationship or seek life experiences that give you all of the positive things in the absence of all of the unwanted experiences as well. Right? So that's why it's really important. If you are an executive in a corporation or if you are in the running to become an executive, one of the most important skills that you can develop is the skill of self-governance. Self-governance is the ability to be able to understand with true and genuine reflective awareness, where am I feeling? What am I feeling right now? Why am I feeling this way? And how do I overcome it so that I can have a very composed and very balanced state of mind? And this is where you can restore your equanimity, which is the calmness and the state of mind, the creative zone, the innovation as well, and being and doing so with inspiration and enthusiasm along the way. So self-governance allows you to perform at your highest level, but also at the same time to think in creative ways so that you can have meaningful relationships with other people, embracing and being able to navigate the complexities of support and challenge. So that is self-governance and it is one of the most important skills if you are an executive or if you want to be become an executive one day. So if you're curious and you understand it right now as I'm speaking with you, you really do see the importance of self-governance in this skill and also be able to navigate the relationship and any communications that you have along the way and you're seeing that I really want to develop this skill and you're serious about it, then I invite you to work with me. Every week I work with executives or people in the running for executives and every week I teach skills, teach how to master these skill sets and how to master your communications as well. So if you're serious about working with me, then I invite you to look below this video in the description. The very first link is a link for you to apply to my coaching program. And this is where I'll walk you through the steps every step of the way. Anything that you want to develop, anything that you want to take, the take your career to the next level, however you define it, then I invite you to apply for that in the link in the video below. And I look forward to working with you on the inside. The third way to stop caring what others think of you is to reinstate your authentic self but your authentic self. Now, there's a lot of misinformation of what it means to be authentic and how to become more authentic. There's a lot of misinformation out there because you might've seen this, like in some, you know, in some information that you can receive out there, a lot of people say, well, being authentic just means being yourself. And they just say, be yourself. But here's the thing about that. When those moments where you were really fearful about what other people think and you hesitated to speak up, even in those moments, you were being yourself. That was genuinely who you are in that moment. So if someone tells you to be yourself and that's being authentic, that's why you're noticing that sometimes it just doesn't work because the self, the true self that you were in that moment is the one that was fearful and you weren't faking it. You were being yourself in the moment where you were scared of what other people think, or if you're over concerned, you really were being yourself. So it's not helpful just to say, be yourself. Being authentic, becoming your true authentic self is being balanced in your mind. Having a balanced perspective is being neutral and objective 
and it's also living by your highest values. Because oftentimes when we are in the presence of other people and we're concerned with what they think, one of the reasons why we're concerned with what they think, I mean, if you look in your life, it's not that you're concerned with every single person that's involved in your life. It's not that you're concerned with how everyone in your life thinks about you. There's usually a key group of people or certain individuals. But have you ever thought to yourself, why those people and not why the other people? Right? Chances are the people that you are particularly concerned about what they think, they have something that you perceive that you do not have. In that case, this is where that's why you're noticing that the more we are over concerned with what others think, the more we need external validation for our self-worth or the more that we feel that we are inadequate in our work or in our intelligence or what we bring and the value we bring to that relationship. And it feels quite imbalanced. But when you are your authentic self, you are objective. You're living by your highest values and the things that you're able to produce and the conversations you are able to have are really ones where you don't need to prove yourself, where you have that self-worth and you have that balance. And this is particularly important that self-governance I talked about earlier and the authentic self that I talked about in this point as well and the previous point. These two points are very important, particularly as you are climbing up to the next levels and higher, higher leadership in your career path. Because the higher you climb in your career path or the farther you want to grow, the more that you will need to deal with ambiguity and the more that the pressures of that growth will be able to challenge you and challenge your state of mind as well. So that's why it's particularly important to be operating from your executive centers and not operating from the fears I described earlier. Right, so I hope this was helpful for you. And by the way, if this really resonated with you, give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel as well. Ring that bell below so that you can receive a notification every time I release a new video. Stay tuned because in the next video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can be yourself, how you can be authentic without trying so hard to try to please somebody or try so hard to prove yourself. How do you just be in that present moment? So that video is coming up next.